Hello everyone, this is Craig Chamberlain with the PCM Tech Help Show. I'm working on a uh, licensing comparison here uh, between Windows 7 Professional Retail and uh, the OEM. Now I found a couple PDF documents right on the uh, man, uh, Microsoft website and I wanted to divulge to people the limitations of OEM software licensing and uh, retail uh, software licensing. As you know, the OEM version tends to be a lot uh, more, a lot less expensive, so a lot of people tend to opt in that direction. Unfortunately, Microsoft has made it so Windows 7 OEM really isn't designed for people who are looking to build their own systems anymore. Uh, it actually typically requires you to distribute that machine to a end user and support that end user yourself. So it's more designed for original equipment manufacturers rather than system builders and hobbyists. Uh, Windows 7 is the first operating system to do that, so that's unfortunate news. But if I'm looking at the comparisons here, you have on the right hand side, uh, this is a great document I got from Microsoft's website. It's an OEM software license rules and uh, restrictions. Uh, and you can tell that right out of the bat, right off the bat, you cannot transfer an OEM license from one machine to another. So if you've purchased an OEM copy, you're not allowed to, after building a new machine or upgrading to a new motherboard, able to transfer that license without purchasing an additional copy of an OEM license. Um, they also cannot be deployed over terminal surfaces. That's mostly an administrative uh, you know, if you're a system administrator, you're not allowed to do that with an OEM license as well. It also looks like you can do, there's some restrictions to hardware replacement. The motherboard is the component that determines whether or not Microsoft Windows desktop operating system license is required. So if you replace your motherboard, you have to buy a new license. Bad news for people who do have a hardware failure. I do know that you can get a replacement motherboard uh, that's an identical motherboard and you can get it from the OEM. So in other words, unless a replacement is a defect. Uh, so it says a motherboard upgrade or replacement to require a new operating system license with an identical series motherboard. So you can at least upgrade to a, um, actually it does look, actually look, that's kind of, that kind of sucks. Motherboard re upgrades or replacements require a new operating system license with an identical series motherboard. So if your motherboard is damaged, not necessarily a de defect in the motherboard, you actually, with even by replacing it with the same motherboard, have to purchase a new license. Quite ridiculous, but that is part of the deal. Um, OEM, Microsoft, do not uh, grant downgrade rights. So you can't actually, for, for Office, you cannot downgrade uh, your OEM license into a <laughs> lower version, but you can do that with Windows 7. Uh, why you would actually downgrade your version, I do not know, but you do have that right on the OEM license. Uh, if you scroll down here, there is some additional information. I know this is more of a technical overview on this video, but usually people want to know the, the nitty gritty. OEM software uh, may not be transferred to another machine. Uh, that's a pretty much, that's a given actually for OEM licenses, so you cannot transfer that to a new machine. Even if the original laptop PC or server is no longer in use, or if the software is removed, the OEM license are tied to the original device in which the software was installed. As long as the license and device remain together, there's no limit to the number of times they may be transferred from one user to another. So in other words, you can give the OEM machine to another user and they can keep that license, but that's about it. Um, if you transfer the PC to a new end user, the software media manuals, if applicable, and all the uh, certificates should be included. So if you give it to a friend or family member or resell it, you have to include that license with it. Uh, and there's a couple other things here. I'm actually going to include a copy of this document in the in the video description. That way people have it. Uh, it's very useful. Uh, there's some re-imaging issues, downgrade rights issues, hardware replacement. Um, generally, an end user can replace or replace all of the hardware components on a computer except the motherboard and still retain the original OEM license. That's good news for those of you who... You know, if you can justify it as a defect, which in a lot of cases you can, a motherboard failure, in most circumstances, if you're upgrading, changing processors or RAM or any of that stuff, you can actually, you know, go through uh, the hoops of upgrading and not worry about your license. Um, there are some other intricacies here uh, that you should probably go through if you're really concerned about the, the contingencies. Now, on the left-hand side, you'll notice that this is my standard license, and it does support with a retail license. You do get all the updates, supplements, internet-based services, and support services. Now, you get all of those except for support services with an OEM license. The support actually falls on the OEM. So if you're building this machine for a friend or family member, it is your responsibility to support it, not Microsoft's. So that's a limitation of it. Now, it gets even more interesting if you scroll down here to section number 17 on this license. And here you have uh, 
transfer to another computer. And if you have a retail version, you can. It says you may transfer the software and install it on another computer for your use. That computer becomes a licensed computer. You may not do so to share this license between computers. So if you build a new machine, you can actually transfer a retail license to the new machine. Um, and also you may transfer the software for an anytime upgrade as well. And, uh, and this is an interesting one, transfer to a third party. You are allowed to resell this license if you buy a retail copy. So technically you can, you know, I'm done with Windows 7, you can take your license and then you can actually sell it to a third party so that they can install it on their system, but you have to remove it from yours. So those are the primary differences between uh, the OEM licensing and the retail licensing. It really just depends on your situation. If I'm building a computer for somebody else, I will be building it with an OEM license and I have to register myself as a partner and a system builder through their website that's free and then I have to install it using a OPK or OEM pre-installation kit and all that's pretty pretty self-explanatory if you've downloaded it. Um, but if you're gonna buy one just for yourself, it's recommended to use the retail license. So that's kind of in a nutshell how that's done. If you want more information, just check out these two documents. I had to dig them up. So they're really, really invaluable for that uh, licensing comparisons and benefits. So uh, I hope this answers a lot of your questions. This was a common question that I received. And uh, if you have any questions, just uh, swing by and ask them anytime. Thanks for stopping by.